New Jersey has among the strictest rules in the country to protect land in flood zones from being contaminated. The Christie administration proposed wholesale rules changes to ease those regulations, contending they were hindering economic growth. The legislatures now blocked those changes using a rarely employed tactic called a concurrent resolution. The New Jersey CR Club's hailing it as a major environmental victory. Its director is Jeff Tittle. Thank you very much for being with us. Why a major environmental victory? Well, because the rules that we have in place, which were bipartisan and took years to develop, really not only help protect people from flooding, but help protect water quality in our our highest quality streams and rivers, especially around our reservoirs. And the Christie administration um, last year came out with these new rules that could completely roll back those protections. In a, state that had, in a state that has had so much flooding and so many problems with water quality, it not only didn't make sense, it's actually going to cause a lot of damage to the people of New Jersey. What specific revisions had the DEP proposed to the flood hazard plan, and how would they have negatively affected the environment? Well, uh, the example I would give is that we have stream buffers along most of our high-quality streams that feed our reservoirs, and they would virtually eliminate those buffers, and those buffers are up to 300 uh, feet on each side of the, uh, the river. And by eliminating that, it would mean you could develop close to the rivers and streams. You can actually dump stormwater directly into the streams. You could build houses with septics 50 feet away. Uh, it eliminates you know, protections for the headwater areas up on the mountains where our streams start. And so all that all the additional runoff from getting rid of those buffers will mean more pollution from septic and sewer and more floodwaters going downhill faster. Is, is that why various federal agencies also oppose the new rules? Yes, that's the main reason why EPA came out against the rule, as did the League of Municipalities and the flood pain managers. FEMA itself came out against the rule because it would allow for development on piers, which violate FEMA rules, and would allow for more development in what are called flood hazard areas, areas that are, yeah. you know, that are prone to flooding. And so that's why those organizations came out against them. What does a concurrent resolution mean, and can the DEP still impose revisions? Well, what it means is that the legislature has found um, that the rules violate legislative intent, that they violate the state's Clean Water Act, the state's Pollution Control Act. Uh, and so it goes back to DEP, who now can address those concerns raised by the, legi raised by the legislature by either pulling this rule down or making changes to the rule that further go along with what the, the legislature says. And if they don't, then the legislature can then pass another resolution through both houses. It's a simple majority, uh, no governor's signature, and then the rules themselves will be. Does will be, the legislature uh, have the votes? Yes. It passed um, overwhelmingly, uh, and, it, and it was bipartisan. And so, yes, you just need a simple majority, which is 21 votes, and it got, I think, 24 votes. So, yes, the, the votes are there, and, I, and the ball is back in the, you know, in the DEP's court to either help protect people from flooding and protect their drinking water or side with special interests in the destruction of critical water supply streams. Okay. Jeff Tittle, thanks for being with us. Anytime. Appreciate it.